Hello everybody and welcome to your Angels Journal. My name's Scott McKay and I'm delighted to bring you this show. So today we're going to be looking at Rangers potential um, manager candidates should Philippe Clement leave the building. Um, it's not been long since we've done more deep dive into Philippe Clement and since then things have went very sour very quickly. Um, so here we're going to look at who we could potentially be looking at bringing in the door should he leave. So, first up on the list, as you all know, is Kevin Muscat. He was linked before Philippe come on get a job. He was a, a front runner for it. He became very close to it, apparently. He's currently with Shanghai Port FC. Now he's a 51-year-old Australian, so he's quite young, which is good. Um, his contract is until the 31st of December 2024. Expires just before the new year. Prefers a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, and we all know the style of football that Kevin Muscat plays having been assistant to former Celtic manager Ange Postacoglu. And um, in terms of honours, he's won the J-League in the Super Cup. Um, the Melbourne victory, he won the Australia Cup. And with Shanghai Port, he's currently top of the league with one game left. And that um, that it, that could be another championship secured this weekend. He likes high-intensity running and pressing out of possession. Quick, fluid transition and attacking play with a lot of the ball movement now. Throw again, he's kind of his club career and management. I think it's quite important to talk about what what we should be looking for as a club and weighing it up. So get in the comments below. Let me know who your favourite candidate is out of all of these guys. Um, so we can envisage some kind of future should Philippe come on and leave the building. So in St. Truden, he had a 14.29% win percent. Um, with Yokohama, had a 57.76% and with Shanghai Port, he's at a 78.38%. So in, in total overall, he's managed 167 games. He's, uh, he's won 98 of them, drew 28 and lost 41. And he has had, a, he's got a managerial win rate of 58.68%. I'm not really one for these stats and stuff, but as football these days, it's in a modern game. So that's Kevin Muscat and what he's currently up to just now. This is him on Football Manager. Well, you all know I'm a big, big Football Manager fan. Um, I believe the database can be very handy to have. So as you can see here, on the right-hand side, where it comes to motivating, that's one of his um, key stats when it comes to being a manager. He's 16 out of 20. He's very good people management. 13 out of 20. He's got 18 determination, 14 adaptability, 11 level of discipline. And then it's just like judging player potential and ability and tactical knowledge is eight. He tends not to hold a high defensive line um, and tends to. There isn't much there in terms of Kevin Muscat. His personality is he's a perfectionist, which would fit in, fit in with Rangers FC. He's got his continental A licence. This guy was my was my chosen candidate before Philippe come on get, get a job just be, because I thought it was important that Rangers finally got a style of play in place get a brand of football that's that we can be recognized for across the, across the globe but ultimately it's got to be successful but i feel strongly about muscat if craig moore's recently come out and uh and give us go radio he was on and he says he wasn't he, he wasn't interested he wouldn't be, that ship sealed or something the quote was but um muscat you just don't know his contract's up in january could they come don't know. How would you feel about Kevin Muscat as an extra Rangers manager? Like I said, get in the comments below and let me know what you think of each candidate. So, the next guy has been we've all wanted him for a long, long time. He's a very loyal manager. His name's uh, Kajitil Nutson. He's 56. He's Norwegian. He's a Bodo Glint manager. He was appointed there in January 2018. That loyalty isn't, it, isn't it something you see in football anymore, especially when Ajax come calling for your services like they did the beginning of last season, I think it was. His contract expires a year in December, 2025. He's managed 336 games in his career, and he's he's, he's collected overall 1.88 points per game. Um, while he's been manager of Bodo Glimp, he's managed 296 games. He's won 178. He's got 63 draws and 55 losses under his belt. Um, 
he's got a win percentage of 60.4, which isn't too bad. It's better than Muscat's. Um, as honours as he's won in Norwegian League twice, he's been a coach of the year three times. His European record is 60 games. 133, they're on 12, 15 losses, a 55% win rate in Europe now. See for a team like Bodo Gunt from Norway, that's an absolutely outstanding record. Um, he's, preferred, he's preferred formations a 4 3 3. Everything goes through his number six, Patrick Berg, to build attacks. Funnily enough, we don't seem to have a decent one of them just now. Nico Raskin's come into some form, but could, is he a nuts in player? Nobody knows. It, Plays a defense. It plays defensively. It presses in a three four two one two formation. Three four one two. That is sorry. Plays a high line to restrict the pitch for oppositions. He's got a good track record of improving players and giving youth a chance, which we all want. But we've also seen this with come on Bill and Geo. We we're all told by them that they would give youth a chance. We've yet to see it. He's used to working on a smaller budget. He hired Bjorn Mansvik, a former Air Force pilot is a mental health coach to ensure that his players should be in psychologically in top form. Now, is this something that's important in today's game? As I say, he's all got an opinion, get any comments and tell me. Should Rangers be looking at something like that? Is it something that's needed in modern football? Or is it a case of roll your sleeves up and get us out of the mess we are currently in? So in Football Manager, as you can see here, he's a perfectionist as well. He's got his continental pro licence. He tends to sign many youth players. He signs under 24 players for the first team. He uses counter-attacks. Like signing lower league players, so he likes signing players from the same league. Um, he allows creative freedom. He looks for underlaps from his full-backs. Um, he works the ball into the box. Plays out of defence. He forces opposition to play, I think, as narrow that ends up saying. He uses intense pressing and uses, uses counter-pressings. So his motivation... Is 17 out of 20 for his managerial statistics and his people management is 17 out of 20. Judging player ability is 11 out of 20. Judging player potential 17 out of 20. His tactical knowledge is 12. He's got a net 16 out of 20 level of discipline and a 19 out of 20 determination. Can we get nuts in? I don't know. We would need to be in a situation to ask a question. Is he a better candidate than Musket? I don't know. Both like, both play... Uh, both play a good style of football. Like I say, they've got an identity. Um, one has managed in three different countries. The other has managed just in uh, Norway. So it's very difficult to tell how good these guys would actually be if they were to walk up the marble staircase at Ibrox. Are they safe options? Who knows, but it was Philippe come on a safe option. I think it was the safest out of the, out of the candidates last year. Um like we said, it's, it's not worked out though. The safe candidate and the name on everybody's lips just now is Derek McInnes. So he's 53 year old. Well, no, he's Scottish. He used to play for Rangers. He's managing Kilmarnock. His contract expires on 31st of May 2026. His managerial career started at St Johnston, where he had a 40.96% win rate. Then he went to Bristol City, where he had a 26 0.98% win rate. Then he went to Aberdeen, 53.58% win rate. Kilmarnock, he's at a 39.69% win rate. Overall, he's got a 46% win rate. So he's managed 738 games, so he's very experienced. He's won 339 of them, joined 100, 164 and lost 234. He's managed in Europe 39 times. He's got 15 wins under his belt, 12 draws and 12 losses. Um, he won the championship title with St Johnston 2008-2009. Won a League Cup with Aberdeen 2013-14, the championship title with Kilmarnock in 2021-2022. His preferred formations are 4 4 or 4 2 3 one He likes to build well-structured teams in and out of position, in the, uh, in and out of position, and he's good at rebuilding clubs. So, if you look at Derek McInnes, who was obviously linked with the job, beforehand and knocked it back. There's been various rumours as to why he knocked it back back then. Is he a good choice? I think he's a very safe and stable choice just now. With his track record of getting his teams into cup semi-finals, that is no minor feat for a for a guy managing at this level to be able to do that. We have got go them into consistent cup finals and semi-finals, albeit he only won one. But we all know the golfing class. 
that he's that he's facing at the time. When it takes his teams up against Celtic and Rangers, he's always got a game plan. His teams are always hard to beat. That shows you that he's tactically he can change a game with his tactics, which is what Rangers is needing just now. Let's be honest about it. He's a Rangers fan at heart. He's been previously recommended to Rangers um, by the late great Walter Smith. I see the guy for you. Get any comments and let me know. And football manager, his teams, it tends to sign domestic base players. We've all been going on about that Rangers squad and we've been missing for a long, long time. Um, and at least to sit back and protect the league now. Derek McInnes would come into Rangers never having that quality of squad of players. So if he can do what he can do with Kilmarno, can he make a jump and do it with Rangers? Um, his tactical style says here is wing play and he likes playing a 5-3-2 or a 4-2-3-1. I would name adopt a 5-3-2, maybe a 3-5-2 that we keep bogging on about. Um, his motivation is 12 out of 20, people manage with 13 out of 20, judging player ability 9 out of 20, judging player potential 14 out of 20, and tactical knowledge is 9. Now Derek McInnes is... A good candidate, a good steady candidate for me. Would the Rangers go and ask a question? I don't know. Would they take it? I don't know. He's proven that when he was at Aberdeen, he's a fairly he's a fairly loyal manager. Um, he knocked back not only Rangers job, he knocked back his underling job and various different ones like that. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's time to go back down the Scottish route? And if you do, is Derek McInnes your choice? Get in the comments again and let me know. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content. The next guy is a name that's um, probably going to favour an awful lot. You're probably smiling at your TV screen just now. Uh, Gennaro Gattuso, he's 46 year old, he's Italian. He's currently managing Hadjuk Split. He's contracted there to 30th of June 2026. Preferred formations are 4 3 3, but he's also used a 3 4 3 and a 4 2 3 1 in the past. His European record does 13 wins, 8 draws, and 10 losses. 41.94% um, win rate. He's won the Italian Cup in Napoli in 2019-2020. He likes to play with width from either fullbacks or wide players. Um, he likes to win the ball back quickly once possession is lost. So he started off by managing AC Milan, which had a 49.40% win rate. Napoli had a 58% win rate. And then he went to Valencia, 31.82% um, um, win rate. And then he went to Marseille which was a 37.5% run rate. Hadjuk Split currently with flying in the Croatian league, and he's got a 64.7% win rate. So overall, Gennaro Gattuso has got a 50.66% win rate. We all want that. Um, we all want that discipline, the drive, the determination back at Rangers. But as Gattuso the guy to bring it? Get in the comments and let me know. On Football Manager, he tends to work the ball into the box, plays out of defence, but he's a perfectionist, as we all know, he's a bit of a fiery character. His history down here on the left-hand side with... Um, he's managed, I've skipped on his TVG, but we'll finish off and get to his own first. Um, he's managed AC Milan, he's managed Napoli, Valencia, Marseille, he's managed a lot of a club, so he would know what he was doing he, but as a former Rangers player. He knows what's expected of him as well. So let me know if you think it's time to go and get go and bring Gattuso home. Next guy in the list, Stephen Gerrard, 44, English, currently a Letifak. Rumour has it, it's been widely reported in Saudi that he has lost his job. Um, he prefers a 4-3-3 or a 4-3-2-1. European record, he's, played, he's won 55 to run 17, lost 15 times. He's got a 63% win rate. Honours wise, he's got a Scottish Premiership title in 2020 He likes his fullbacks to provide width, uh, two wide players to invert his number 10s, and midfielders to join the attack. He, he also plays a narrow 4 3 3 out of possession to cut off the centre of the park and force all positions to play, oh, excuse me, to play in wide areas. So I think it's fair to say. I don't know if I would want Stevie G back, if I'm being honest. I think not having the same backroom team with him, i.e. Michael Beale's not there. Don't know if he's quite re quite recovered for losing Michael Beale. 
when he lost Michael Bale, things went very sour for him at El Etifak. And if he has lost the the job there, then I don't know where that leaves him in terms of his manager, his managerial career and where he goes. No, I really like Stevie G. He's my favourite football player growing up. I absolutely love them. Um and he was Rangers manager to team come through, but I think it's fair to say he all broke our hearts when he went to Aston Villa. But it did say you can't you need to fix the roof while the sun's shining. And we didn't the back him, which is why he left, supposedly. At Rangers he had a sixty four point five eight percent win rate. Aston Villa thirty two point five and Aleti Fack he had thirty six point nine six. I'm not going to sit here and try and sell Stevie G anybody because we all know what we would get. Um has he learned anything for he left us? Probably. But he's also not got the quality in the squad that he did have. So would he be able to come back and provide uh, provide a, a bit of competition for Celtic and Aberdeen over time? We'll never know, really. We'll never know. We'll just need to wait and see if it happens, if he is the man the board choose to move forward with. In um, Football Manager, uh, you can see stats there. He likes to have a senior squad. He uses his non first team goalkeeper for domestic cup games, he uses crosses, plays out of the fence, focuses down the flanks, uses intense pressing, use, uses counter pressings. Um, we all know that he wants to be manager of Liverpool down the line. Do you think it's time to go and get Stevie G back and bring him home, so to speak? To help him re- he can help rebuild Rangers and we rebuild his reputation, albeit at that stage. We know he's going to give Celtic a game. Which is what we're all looking for. We're all looking for us to be competitive again. Can this be the guy to topple them? Need to see. Next man is David Moyes. Um, David Moyes is currently a free agent. There's been a lot of clamour for him. For me, it's an absolute no. I don't want David Moyes. I don't think he would commit anything. Maybe as an interim at the end of the season, he's a safe pair of hands, yes. Long term, absolutely not. He's 61. Free agent. He won the League One title with Preston North End and uh, just the Millennium. Won the Community Shield with Man United and then he won the Yeva Conference League with West Ham. Um, prefers a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. He brings a lot of discipline. Occasionally played with five at the back. Um, European record, 144, thrown 10. No, sorry, my apologies. 173, threw 44, lost 10. 57.5% uh, win rate. Um, turns to a 4 1 4 1 out of possession into a low slash mid block and looks to block off the centre of the park to send opponents out wide with the ball and to fight longer range efforts. Now, while this guy's got an awful lot of su- success at his back, safe to say he's a very good manager, but can he come in and manage the club size of Rangers? He tried it with Man United, get sacked after a season. Is he, is he really the man to come in and move us forward? Like I say. Safe pair of hands, yes. Is it a right guy long term? For me, it's a no. Again, we spoke about stability, a safe pair of hands, and I've I would probably rather McInnes over Moyes because McInnes is younger. He's wanted the job for a long, longer time. I just I just think it's maybe time for McInnes, but that's just my personal opinion. David Moyes on football manager, so prefers to sit in, uses counter attacks, uses a loan market, relies on set pieces. Uses non first team goalkeeper for domestic games and it looks through over that. Now, is it Man United? Didn't they play the best of that Obviously, Man United are a massive, massive club, but uh, do, do you think that he can come in with a ball dominant team and do anything with them? That's a the question I'm asking. Let me know what you think in the comments. We all know what it would bring. In terms of qualities, qualities probably unquestionable to be honest, but um, we'll just need to wait and see. At least we know we could probably score fair corner because he's got 16 out of 20 set pieces. The next man is one that Doug recommended, Philippe Koku. Um, he's 54-year-old. He's Dutch without a club just now. He's won three Dutch championships with PSV, a Dutch Cup, two Dutch Super Cups. He was also manager at Derby for a while, I think. Nearly get them promoted a couple of times. His preferred formation is 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 or a 5-3-2. Um, his European record is he's 144 through 14, lost 11. He's got a 63.77 win rate. 
He likes to play counter-attacking football, creating goal-scoring opportunities with the fewest passes possible. Doesn't mind not dominating possession. Prefers to uh, defend zonally in a 4-5-1, limiting space for opponents to play in. So at least you know you'd have structure in the middle of the park. Right now there's literally two or three passes up the park and Rangers can see the goal. Um, he's managed PSV 232 times. Fenerbahce, Derby and Vitesse on him. Vitesse has been his latest club. He worked with um, good quality of player, Vitesse. Um, there was a couple, there was a boy who went to Stoke from them in January that Rangers were looking at there. Um, so we'll meet you wait and see. I don't think it's anybody that would be on Rangers' radar, but it's interesting to know that he's available. Um, he prefers, he fit players into preferred tactic. Allows creative freedom. Allows creative freedom. Works the ball into the box. Plays out of defence. Uses counter pressing. So he's got sixteen or twenty for working with young girls. Good tactical knowledge in twelve out of twenty. Um, good people management twelve out of twenty. He's sixteen out of twenty adaptability. Um, he's got a variety of uh, experience in the game as a manager. So it would be an interesting candidate for the for the manager role. We'll just need to wait and see if it's somebody that would apply for it or if Rangers would look to. He has only 52, so he's still relatively young. He does have British football experience with Derby. He did do a decent enough job with them. Next. Next man on the list is Frank Lampard. Um, he's English, he's without a club. He was recommended to the club by Graham Souness. Um, at Chelsea, he's had two interim spells. Um, second spell, 10% win rate. It, when it was at Everton, a 27.27% 27 .27 win rate. His first spell at Chelsea was 52.38% win rate. That was when they had embargo and they played an awful lot of youth. Um, guys like Tammy Abraham got their move. Um, Tamori that went to AC Milan. Mason Mount got his breakthrough. So he's very good at bringing through youth players. But it was obvious at the time that the guys were good enough for Chelsea, um, considering the the lack of options in the transfer market. The transfer ban overall he's got a forty two point three five percent win rate. Frank Lampard for me should be a candidate, but is he the guy? No, um, he'll be a candidate for a job. He is a Rangers fan, obviously these two teams are Rangers and Chelsea. But for me, it's just still far too much a risk. Um, he is British, good to come in on an interim basis, probably. I'd probably rather that than giving him a permanent, giving him, giving him the job permanently, give him an interim basis and see how he how he goes from whenever I come on leaves to the end of the season, see if he can bring any pride back, see if he can play any football. Um, his team does like playing decent football. For what I remember at Derby, he took over for Philippe Koku at Derby. Actually, um, he's motivating thirteen out of twenty. People management fourteen out of twenty. Judging player ability and potential on the right hand side there. Tactical knowledge, 12 out of 20. Now, the guys came up the best of the best. He's come up against Guardiola and Klopp plenty of times against uh, City and Liverpool, respectively. So we'll just need to wait and see if he's the guy to lead the Rangers forward. I guess he says, I don't think so. I think it was just a case of all the candidates last year soonest recommended him because he obviously was the one that stood out. Um, whether he stands out in the next hiring process remains to be seen next guy is probably my favourite for the job alongside McInnes and it's uh, Henrik Breidstrom he's a 48 year old Swedish manager but Malmo who Rangers beat at the, in the first game of the Europa League this season his contract expires on 31st of December 2024 although we aren't 100% sure on that um, he's as Malmo manager he's played 78 matches won 50 drawn 13 lost 15 that generates a 64.10% win rate. He's also managed Kalmar and Sirius, both in Sweden. Um, and overall, he creates a 49.6% win rate. I think he's won a Swedish title. He likes creating relationships on the park. He's he's a very different manager. If you go to our Malmo preview interview with Skolde, who we done the interview with it was Ross had done that. He tells us a lot about Rise Drum. Um I'll work that out. I actually maybe upload it. 
in Sweden. He tends to allow creative freedom, play with defence, uses intense pressing. Um, he's got a continental pro, pro license. He's spirited. He's good at motivation, people management. Um, tactical knowledge is 16 out of 20. No so good with set pieces, unfortunately. He's got 12 out of 20 for working with youngsters. So if we're going to go with a young up, young up and coming coach, is this the guy you want? He prefers a 4 2 3 1 formation or a 5 2 3, according to AFM. So this is one that's interesting. We'll just need to wait and see how it all pans out. The next guy is Christopher Ilza. He's 47, he's Austrian. Um, he's from Sturm Graz. His contract expires in 2026. Um, he's got 55.2 win percent win rate with Sturm Graz. He won a league with them last season. Max Johnston, the former model right back, currently plays for them. Um, and Mike Beareth, the former Arsenal kid that was on loan at Motherwell last season. Um, he's currently previously managed Austria Vienna, Wolfsberger, and TSV Hartburg who were also all from um, Austria. Overall, this man has got a 52.32% win rate. He has, well, like I say, he did win with Sturm Graz last season, the Austrian League, and brought them the first, the first um, cup, domestic cup glory in a long time. I think he won a, a, a cup with them as well, is the league title. So in FM, he uses crosses, it looks rover lot, focuses play down the flanks, uses intense pressing. He's fairly determined. Um, continental pro license. Motivating's 15 or 20. People management 11 out of 20. Tactical knowledge 13 or 20. This guy's an interesting candidate. And the boy that made his slides up for me was like it was actually him that um, put him in. So in terms of what candidates, I don't know. Who I would go for, probably Rystrom or McInnes would be my two favourite ones, but I'm also sitting in the fence with the other guys. Other way, Luke, who's your preferred candidate? Who do you want to see in at Rangers next? Should Philippe come on um, get the sack? Is this a decent shortlist? Please let us know. Thanks for tuning in and remember, every night is Rangers Channel Night. Cheers. 